What do you think of the idea of they're talking about bringing the Olympics to Boston in 2024? It's an interesting concept. Yeah. I think it's, you know, I always say you have to try something big, try something different, because out of that, something good will happen. And this is a real opportunity for Boston to put some of the brain, best brains in the, in the country right, together to help us with this. And new initiatives for the city. We know we have new initiatives on uh, infrastructure. How do we deal with that? Maybe if something come out of that uh, roadways won't be as clogged as they are today. You know, maybe we'll turn some of the uh, land over. We could do Suffolk Downs, we're happy. Now we're not going to have racing over there. Or oh, where the teacher's hall is over in Columbia Point. Or oh, CX um, property over in, uh, in Brighton. So you think the Olympics could transform the city? It could help transform the city, yeah. But the, the thing I always worry about, where's the money coming from? That's the what, concern I have. Yeah. Is where the money is coming from. And that has to be very creative about how they come up with the money. What about traffic? Uh, traffic will be always, we, I had an issue in the Democratic National Convention. Yeah. We had these traffic plans and we, the city was a ghost town. Yeah. Everyone uh, left. Everybody left the city. Yeah. I, I, if, see, that would be helpful to us because we have to put a traffic plan in place. Traffic in the city is the world's worst. I mean, I, uh, it's one thing, that's one of my failures is traffic. I get people to move around the city. I always said that, you know, I can never, call, I want to, there are certain streets in the city of Boston, I want to make one way at five o'clock to get them out of the city. I, the structure in the city wouldn't let us do it. Even though I was mayor, I met a lot of opposition to that. A lot. I like to do in Washington, D.C. There's some of the roadways at five o'clock, they come one way outside, going outside the city. Why can't Boston do that? And we should be doing, thinking about that. Being creative about that. I know you were interested in making it a better biking city at one point. Yeah. I know you hired, um, I'm trying to think of the young woman's name. I interviewed Nicole her a couple Friedman. Times. Nicole Friedman. She was great. Um, and it doesn't seem to be, I mean, I know a lot of work's being done, but boy, that seems like it's it's going to be hard to, to make it a city that's great for biking. Well, it's, it's getting better. Yeah. We're not... Um, we're not last like we used to. No, no. We're not, yeah. we're, we're, I think we're third. Yeah. I bad for a city that was dead last. Not yeah. last. We were dead last. It was we were, cycling magazine said, yeah. said that we were the worst. Yeah, and uh, we, we accomplished something, bringing it to the third for best city. And uh, we put a lot of the um, bike lanes together in the city. They worked out well. So, you know, uh, David, keep on making improvements. You can't stand still. Standing still means you, you, you sta status quo. And status quo never works. You seem to use that for your personal life, too. Yeah. You're still moving around. I got it. Yeah. I got to do some things. With my, there's people I still want to help, even though I'm mayor. There's things I could do. I mean, some of the nonprofits I work with, um, Project Hope and Rock Springs, to Margaret, those places, they're fabulous. They help young women who might get in trouble, help them have a better life. So I, I continue to do those little things. Uh, uh, St. Peter's over in uh, Bowling, Geneva, those kids over there, I love those kids. Mm. I help them with the different programs they have. Things like that. I, not that I'm mayor, but I still help out, get involved. And you joked about uh, about your wife and her cooking. And how long have you guys been married now? Uh, um, <laughs> Forty-seven years. Forty-seven years. Yeah. Forty-eight. Uh oh, there seems to be a discrepancy here. <laughs> just changed. So we just changed. Yeah. I think it's forty-eight because we got just October first uh, anniversary. You didn't forget about it, did you? No. Okay. Because you'd be in the doghouse. It won't be the first time. <laughs> it won't be the first time. I've been, I've been more doghouses than anybody else in the whole <laughs> country. But I sometimes uh, get out of it. You get out of it. You must be a smooth talker. <laughs> no. I just become a piece of fruit. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. <laughs>